about to. But anyway, and she told uh, Bill Landis, said, well, said, uh, that's not where he's buried. Said, there's an Indian buried there. So uh, I happen to hear that, and I go running up there because he made a liar out of me. Now, this goes to prove how history can get twisted around everyone. So you've got to be careful in what you hear and what you believe. That, that can be proven. And come to find out that what was left of George Mann was buried in front of that cave where they found him. Uh, and the grave that for years that everyone in this community thought was the grave of George Mann was actually one of the Indians that killed him. That's an interesting story. Is that the end of it? No, nope, that's still not the end of it. 1959, uh, Barbara Walker and her grandmother were sitting out on the front porch one Sunday afternoon, and this big black Cadillac drives up, and uh, this Indian in full headgear, old man, gets out of the back of that Cadillac. His son was driving the Cadillac. And he walked up to uh, uh, Barbara's grandmother. Her name was Love Clout, I believe. I believe that's her name. And, and anyway, said that, uh, wanted to know if they knew where his ancestor, which was his great, great, I don't know how many greats it would be, from, from 1794 to uh, uh, 1959. Uh, anyway, where his great, 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 let's say, grandfather was buried, and, and Miss Clapp said, yes, by the fire on the hill. He walked over to the edge of the porch and looked that way and said that he'd always heard that the men in the community had buried that Indian there. And they told this man, now we're talking about George, we're talking about Nicholas Gibbs and Reynolds and anyone else around here, had told her they buried her husband up on that hill so that she wouldn't feel so badly uh, if she knew it would have been devastating if she knew that, knew that they actually buried it, what was left of them in pieces in the grave at, at the cave. So anyway, that's how that story got started. But he saw that and he gave her, in fact, I've got a picture of him at home, of, of the grandson of one of the Indians. One of them was an Apache. Uh, everybody thought it was a Cherokee Indian, but it was some renegades, and, and the one that's buried there is an Apache Indian, so I've been told. Now, that's the story of George Mann, and it wasn't long uh, after that, I believe in 1795 or maybe right before that, that Nicholas Gibbs, the Indian, stole about six horses from him. And the old barn sat right back here, somewhere about where these cars are parked, behind that little bit, before the old Nicholas Gibbs barn was okay and they stole horses there. So I guess he was lucky in his family that they didn't try to attack him. But that's the story on George Mann and the Gibbs family and Reynolds Ford. All that, all things that were almost forgotten about, but I'm glad that there's more, more about it. Is that good enough, Lisa? Anybody else want to ask me a question so I can talk 15 or 20 minutes? So, anyway, the house itself um, of course, the kitchen is not part of the original structure. That's on it now. But the original part of the house, you see the uh, chinking that's in these logs on the back of it. As far as I know, and I'm satisfied it's true, is the original chinking, what's left of it, that Nicholas Gibbs and his sons, and probably maybe the Reynolds family. Um, it's original. I mean, what can you say? That's original made out of mud and probably lime. And the reason it's lasted so long is because from 1850 on till just last year, uh, there was always something built on the back of the house. That's why that part's lasted so long. But it's, uh, it, it's um, I mean, you can go to Blunt Mansion and, and see uh, uh, a house as old as this one, or you can maybe go to John Severe at Marble, what's that called? Marble, Marble Springs and, and see, and see that, well, these were famous people. Now, Nicholas Gibbs, folks, was just about like you and me. He was just a hard-working pioneer. How many hard-working pioneer homes are still standing, especially on the very ground where they were built? So all of you have something to be very, very proud of here. You won't find many like this in this entire country. That's it, Joe. Uh, no, now they, well, you know, I, I can't answer that. 
of course, he was 60 years old when he came here. And um, I don't know that. Now, I, I'm sure he went with the $2 that were in Union County or Sharp's Fort, but I, I don't know about that. Chances are probably slim that he ever did that because families, when they separate like that, it's rare that they would ever get back together. They didn't have a new Cadillac to drive. And, you know, it would, it would be rough getting across Smoky Mountain just on a horse. But I suppose all of you know that the clock is inside, the grandfather's clock. Uh, Nicholas Gibbs brought that with him when he sold out in North Carolina and came here. We uh, lost the clock for many years, found it in Texas, purchased it and brought it back. So be sure you look at that clock. It's got all wooden works in it, and he brought it over here on an ox cart. So tradition says. Any other questions? Yes, sir, Mr. Anderson. That is you I see there. Yeah. Uh, the path of the Cumberland Road, does it still, I mean, Emory Road, does it follow the path of the Cumberland Road? Well, much? that's a good question. Um, uh, Clayton probably tell us, is it still where it's always been, Clayton? It's really good. Yeah, well, Joe, Joe, oh, yeah. But it, it's basically within the same area that, that it's always been. Yeah. I know there's a spring over the hill here, I'm wondering if the road followed around it, or did it come over the hill, or? I, I don't know, that'd be hard to, to determine, but now at Claps Chapel Church, where you've got that area right in front of the church, that little island, that was the original Emory Road, and then Miss Brown, that owned the house here, let them go straight across when they uh, widened the road and straightened it up, and she gave Claps Chapel that little island part, that right place. Oh, yeah, it was animal trails, I'm, I'm sure. At one time, a bear trail or something, they, they followed that. <laughs> Buffalo trail. Yeah. I know it was told, of course, now the coffee trees, I'm going over 15 minutes ago. Uh, the coffee trees that are here, I'm sure you know the story of that. That was uh, Jacob. Is that right? Jacob's the one brought them back from here. Well, they, was, they, they were brought in his memory. But Jacob uh, was at the Battle of Horseshoe Bend with uh, Andrew Jackson. Um, and he brought back in his shop pouch coffee, coffee bean, a Kentucky coffee bean tree seeds, I guess you'd call it. Uh, brought back from there and put, put them out here in, in the yard in memory of his brother, Nicholas Jr., that was killed at Horseshoe Bend. And they say that um, when the soldiers were killed, they were fighting the Indians there that they would throw the soldier's body in, in, the, in the river so that the Indians couldn't get a hold of it. So that's the end of Nicholas Jr. But they're still here, still got some. They come up, they're a very hardy tree.